Just wanted to touch base on one thing that you guys may have not seen before, maybe not, and it's something we call a ring shell. Hey guys, welcome back to Timbridge. We're gonna do something a little different for you out here today. Just wanted to touch base on one thing that you guys may have not seen before, maybe not. Uh, we found out about this when we were, I don't know, 15, 16 years old. And it was one of them things where you're, you're out there sh uh, squirrel hunting or something like that and you're like, man, I'm shooting number sixes, number sevens, something like that, maybe dove hunting and a dang hog comes out there at you or some other animal out there that you wanna, you, you're gonna make mad if you shoot them with a seven and a half or a six or something like that. And it's something we call a ring shell. Uh, me and a buddy of mine, Sean Murray, come up with this. And I don't know how we come up with it, but it's a long time ago. He uh, may get him on TV one day, but not today. But it's what we call a ring shell, and it's where you cut. If you zoom in on this deal, you cut the wadding, or cut the outer shell right in the wadding. And what that does is it comes out, this whole front section comes out as one piece. And when it hits, the, well, it all travels as one piece, the whole plastic piece and everything, when it hits, all the BBs come out. So it acts, what, what the technical term is like a safety slug. And that's what most people call it, but we call it a ring shell back in the day when we come up with it or figured it out or however we come up with it. I don't even remember. None of, neither one of us could figure out what we did. And what we're gonna do is demonstrate that for you today and how that works. Um, believe it or not, I, I may have not been able to come up with this, but I did have some pretty dang awesome shots with it. Um, I did kill a deer with these one day. Uh, me and a buddy of mine were sitting in the stand together when we was probably like 14 or something like that. And I had one of these in the, sh in the, in the gun and a bunch of does came out. And I shot that doe right behind the shoulder with this, and believe it or not, I dug this thing out of that deer's heart. BBs and everything went through it, dropped that deer dead. And he was able to rack the gun and shoot another deer with a buckshot right after that. Another one was, um, some of you might get mad at me about this, but uh, we're, me and Sean actually were walking through the woods one day and I had one of these in the gun and forgot completely about it. And we were just walking through and a crow flew over us, just surprised us and I threw up and shot and that crow dropped dead. And believe it or not, I had a hole right through the middle of it. I shot it with a ring shell. Me and Sean were going berserk when we figured out what had happened. Lucky shot, can't claim there was any skill to it, uh, but it was pretty dang neat. So what I'm gonna do is demonstrate this for you today uh, and show you what the difference is between just the pattern of a, a seven and a half. That's what this is. This Bernagi Sport seven and a half. I don't know if you guys know this brand. Uh, we carry them there in the store at Timberridge. They're an awesome shot, real clean, um, shoot consistent, uh, an awesome, awesome shell. So today we're gonna see how it does as a safety slug, ring shell, or how we call it. So we'll be right back with you in just a minute. Got the old trusty uh, Remington 870 out here today. We're gonna start with just a seven and a half, got the air protection in. Um, we're just gonna do, what we're gonna do is just shoot it down here at the target, show you what the pattern looks like on that. And I think I've got a modified choke in here. Yeah, modified choke. And then we're gonna go over and see what the, what the ring shell will do. We'll see how that goes. There we go. Air protection, range live. So what you will see down there is you can see our wadding cut the hole and we're going to zoom in here in just a minute on a different shot. Our wadding went down there and cut, cut a hole in there as well. But now what we're fixing to do is go in with the ring shell. Let me make sure and make sure there ain't nothing lodged in there. There ain't. Because it will separate on you when you're trying to load it in there. But now I'm going to shoot at the other side of that target, just on the left side of it and we'll see what it does. And there we go. That's what comes out, just a half the shell. If we zoom in down there, you can see just right of the bullseye, we got a solid shot. We're gonna go down there and take a look. So if you look right there, it's like a slug. And if you just don't look, come over there, that's a regular shot. So you see the difference in that joker. Fairly accurate, we're only at 12 yards, but with practice, you can get really good at that and shoot a long ways with it. And we're gonna do some more testing. We're gonna show you what it'll do from a, a damage perspective. We're gonna go to that now. All right, guys, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take the old seven and a half. We're gonna shoot that watermelon down there, just a regular seven and a half from 12 and a half yards, something like that. And then we're gonna go over to that other watermelon and shoot it with a ring shell. We're gonna see what the difference is. You guys ready? Let's see what happens. Oh, not forget about Elsa in the middle right there. She's watching everything. I 
that's pretty devastating. Probably more devastating than I expected. So we're gonna see what's gonna happen now with the ring shell. Admittedly, guys, I probably should have been a little bit farther back on that first shot, but we're gonna go ahead and try it with the second shot in the ring shell. Just so you can see, it's in there. It's separating already. We're gonna try it out. It's a little bit delicate. You get the hang of it. Hopefully I hit it. Holy crap, that thing blew stuff everywhere. <laughs> I don't know if y'all catch it on camera, but that made a significant impact on that watermelon compared to that regular shell. What we're gonna try to do is see if we can find pieces of that uh, wadding and everything down there behind it in, that, uh, in the wood, in the backstop. We'll get back to you in just a second. Well guys, we hadn't found much other than the wadding so far. Um, watermelon's everywhere. We're, uh, what we're trying to do is determine where it hit, where the parts went, um, if we could find anything back here, and if you can look, everything's wet, but there's no BBs everywhere, anywhere. We can't see where any of those BBs impacted. So I don't know whether they just all dispersed into that watermelon and just all went down pretty quick or what, but we have not been able to find anything on this deal. The thing that I can attest is this is a very potent round. Um, it is deadly. I, I, I can attest to that pretty, pretty for sure. We just found it. There it is right there. That's the piece of the, that's the piece of the plastic that came out and, and ejected the BBs everywhere. Don't know where the BBs went, but we found the plastic outer uh, casing part of the shell. All right, guys. Uh, I don't know if y'all, well, you'll see that in the, in the recording. We're probably a little bit too close on that watermelon, so we're gonna try one back another 10 yards and see what we did. We're gonna shoot some water jugs here in a minute. We're gonna do a couple sample rounds here, just on the paper target, see what our pattern looks like, and then go to the ring shell, do the same thing on that, and then we're gonna set up our, our water targets. So this, we're gonna move forward and shoot the, just a regular seven and a half modified choke. Now we're gonna go ahead and shoot the ring shell. Make sure we can hit with it accurately. Oh. <laughs> so that's one of those things that can tend to happen. I don't know if y'all seen that, that'd be pretty cool on camera. So you gotta be careful, it ain't a foolproof system. What I'm gonna show you, um, what y'all will notice on that other video we did, or that other shot we did a minute ago, we had kind of a misfire and what happened is that shell had, I had tilted the gun down and that shell had separated a little bit and let the uh, powder come out of compression. And that's what happened when it kind of misfired right there. So you gotta be careful with it. It's not an exact science. It is obviously modifying a, a shell. So anyway, we're gonna try it again. See there, I hit just a little high from where I hit it a little while ago. And I was aiming a little bit high. I thought it would kind of go down a little bit. So that gives me a point of impact for when we get ready to shoot that uh, water jug in a minute. So next up, we're gonna shoot the water jugs. All right, guys, now we're gonna go ahead and shoot the regular shell. Seven and a half, Bernagi. Here at the milk jug. See what it does. Loaded off there, but as you can see, the milk jug's still in pretty good, pretty good condition. We're gonna go down and check it out right quick. So as you can see, a bunch of just holes in it. Kind of split it because the water, the water will obviously uh, expand when it gets hit, but it's just a bunch of holes everywhere in it. That's what you expect. That's why it works good for birds. Now what we're gonna do is put this one in the same spot. We're gonna try to hit that with a ring shell. <laughs> Try. Try one more time. There we go. Now 
she worked. I hope we got that one good. That thing blowed up everywhere. That's what we're looking for, guys. That's what's supposed to happen right there. It blew it up like a rifle hit it or a slug. So that's what we're looking at. We want performance of a slug, performance of a rifle out of a shotgun. Obviously it takes a little bit of trial and error to get it that way. There are some other tricks to it. Well, in the past we've taken scotch tape and taped, them, taped the shells after we cut them just to hold them together pretty good or not quite cut all the way through the plastic. Just leave a little tail holding it together and I'll show you some, something like that here in just a minute. But you can see the destructive power of that. If you're hitting an animal with that, it will definitely put them down quickly or just fun to play with down at target range. So guys, we come up with one more thing we want to try. And if you zoom down there, we've got a piece of cinder block that's busted off and we're going to see what happens with it. Starting off first with just the bird shot, regular seven and a half, and we're going to see what it'll do to it. If it doesn't bust it, then we're going to try the ring shell and see what it does to it. So here we go on this. Looks like it knocked it down. Looks like it's still intact. We're gonna go check it out. Yep, as you can tell, you can see it's peppered it pretty good, but didn't do much to it at all. Just knocked it down, chipped off a little bit off the top. So now we're gonna see what ring shell will do to this one. All right, guys, ring shell, let's see what happens. <laughs> Did you see that? Holy crap. Am I telling you this sound gun is deadly? Look at this. Pieces. Pieces everywhere. I don't even know where the rest of it went. It's all over the place. But I'm telling you, that sucker is deadly. It's packing a punch of a slug putting it into one area and then just blowing up babies everywhere. I don't even know where the rest of it went. I guess it just dusted it. But again, that's an awesome test. <clears throat> there, you can see where it hit together. So I hit high. That's what happened here. I hit too high on it. If I'd hit lower, it'd have probably done more. But anyway, again, it is, uh, it's deadly. It's a fun little toy to play with. So I think we found our wad right here. I don't know if you can see it. See the red? It went straight through. Came through that, uh, see if I can dig it out of here without tearing it up too bad. All right, we regrouped. We got some pliers now. We're going to see if we can't dig it out of there. Make it a lot easier, I imagine. You can see it's deposited the majority of its BBs in there. Well, you can see them in there too. Let's see if I can put some light on it. See them in there? You can see them back in there. They deposited some in the milk jug and then some back here in that rubber. Anyway, guys, we're going to probably do some more testing on this later, but we just want to give you all an introduction to it and let you all be able to go out and test the ring shell. It is a potent round. For you guys that have not uh, had the opportunity to play with this, you'll enjoy uh, going out and testing this. So tune back in later for some more Timber Ridge stuff. We've got a pretty exciting new series coming for you uh, with this type of stuff. Uh, what we call it just in the field playing. <laughs> well, you'll be excited what we come up with next. Guys, you can tune back into us, uh, like and subscribe and share. And uh, we appreciate you guys uh, watching us. See you next time. <clears throat>